at age four, my guest experienced the tangible glory of God, and the glory continued. Imagine what he's like now. You know, Andrew, it's hard to believe, but at age four, you experienced the tangible presence of God in your bedroom, the glory of God. Tell me what you experienced. Well, you know, Sid, when I was four years old, uh, my mother, my sister, and I were driving on vacation. And at those days, we listened to cassettes. And so I was listening to a cassette of a worship song, and something came over me. And I, I remember getting chills, and I asked my mother, I said, can we play that song again? And she rewound the song, and we played it again. And as she did, I began to be filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Now, thank God I had parents that encouraged me in this. See, I think sometimes we experience the glory of God, and people may not understand what they're experiencing. But she said, son, that's the glory of God. And so after that experience, I continued, and I started prayer meetings in my room. I've always loved music, and so I would start singing at the top of my lungs in worship to the Lord. It's just you. Just me. Now, when I hear prayer meetings, I think of a lot of people. That's your prayer meeting at four. Me and the Holy Ghost. And at four, I didn't know my <laughs> left hand from my right hand. <laughs> well, we, I, I, me and the Holy Ghost, I would start singing every Christian song that I knew and worship to Him. And then I began praying. And it was really during those times that the Holy Spirit birthed a, a, a hunger for God. And I experienced something real that is carrying me through today. The same God. See, we don't receive a junior Holy Ghost. The children don't receive a junior Holy Ghost. They receive the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And so when I received Him, He's carried me through to today and still operating in my life. And so it was really during those times that prayer and intercession and the hunger for the glory of God was birthed in me. Now, it's hard to believe, but there was a point where they didn't expect you to ever speak again. You had seven mini strokes. What yes. Uh, one morning, I was laying in bed talking to my wife. Uh, we were just talking, a casual conversation, and I went and had a seizure. I went into a seizure, never had a seizure before in my life. So she called the ambulance to come, and they took me to the hospital, and they began running test after test after test, and finally they came to the conclusion that I had seven mini strokes. And so when the doctor told me, you may not ever be able to speak or sing again clearly. Now for anybody, that's bad news. But when you're a preacher and you communicate for a living and you communicate, God's, that's what God's called you to do, that's really some bad news. Uh, and so, you know, my tongue was all, uh, you know, torn into pieces from the seizure. But I went home, my family, myself, gathered some intercessors, and for two weeks, we began to pray, and we began to intercede, and we began to believe God for my healing. Two weeks later, we went to my neurologist. Now, he was one of the top neurologists in all of the Southeast region. And uh, he, we went into his office, I'll never forget. Uh, my wife was very pregnant. She was nine months pregnant with our, our miracle baby. And so he said, Mr. Tao, you've had seven mini strokes. Uh, you may not be able to speak again clearly. Do you understand this? And I refused to come into agreement with the, with the enemy's report, because that was what mm -hmm. the enemy wanted. And I said, that's what you say, because I believe the power of words. There's life and death in the power of our tongue. And so I said, you know, that's what you say. And he looked at me with almost sympathy, like I was in denial of some sorts. And uh, he said, well, come here and let me show you your MRI. Let me show you where the lesions on your brain are, and let me just show you what I saw in the hospital. And so he brought me to where his computer was, 
and uh, I gave my wife one chair and he sat in the other chair. Now I'm standing behind them praying in the Holy Ghost. And I know that I have a promise from God. I know that God has spoken to me that I was going to be whole and this was going to be a testimony. So I'm standing back there and I'm praying in the Holy Ghost as he brings up my MRI. And this was his exact word, Sid. He said to me, wait a minute. This doesn't look like the MRI that I saw in the hospital when you were in the hospital. And I'm back there. I'm about to do a Jericho march. I'm about to run around the office right there. (laughs) Come on. I I was about to just shout. Uh, My Pentecostal side was about to come out right there. But I, I, I said, he said to me, I'm going to have to consult with some other neurologists in my practices. Can you come back in an hour? I said, I will come back, but the report's going to be the same. And so my wife and I, we went to Chick-fil-A and got some chicken. And man, we ate good that afternoon. Oh, sure. Yes. And so we came back in an hour and he said to me, we've consulted and we've come to the conclusion that you never had a stroke. And I said, I Well, there are two conclusions. He either never had a stroke or he had a miracle. Come on. Now, uh, when he had an MRI showing he had seven mini strokes, give me a break. Okay. Uh, Tell me about how this triple threat anointing, I've never even heard that terminology. How you even heard about it? Well, I was preaching on a new move of God. He'd give me a revelation to begin to prophesy about a coming move of God. And one night I went to sleep and said it was the most powerful, vivid dream that I've ever had in my life. I I went to sleep and Jesus began to take me to stadiums filled with people. I'm not talking just thousands, tens of thousands of people filled to capacity. And we went to this stadium and Jesus and I were standing in what I could only describe as like the concession area that's at the top of the stadium. And when I looked down, I saw thousands of people running to the altar. Now, I've been a part of stadium uh, services before, ministered in stadiums with different ministries, but I've never seen anything like this before because people weren't just walking slowly to the altar, you know, come to Mm -hmm. the, they were running to the altar. There was a desperation and a hunger that was inside of them. And as they began to run to the altar, they began to accept Jesus as their savior. And he allowed me to see in the spirit. And I could actually see the transformation of this people going from darkness to light. And I saw a physical, it was actually a spiritual transformation that came upon them. And then said, I saw a wave of healing. I can only describe it as like a tsunami of healing that began to take place among these people. It was tens of thousands of people, uh, cancerous growths began to fall off. I saw people rising up out of wheelchairs, just miracles after miracles. I stood back. And I was in such amazement of what was happening. I I just couldn't believe it. And I looked at Jesus and just, you know, utter amazement. And he said, look again. And so I looked again. And when I saw, I saw heavy chains that were all around people. And, And it was so heavy. And they were trying to lift up their hands. It makes me get emotional right now because I I think about what I saw. I I, I see you're almost reliving it. Yes, because most stadium services concentrate on one area, you know, either it's salvation or maybe it's a healing crusade or a deliverance, but I've never seen it to where it's all three at one. And I said, I've never experienced anything like this before. And he said something to me. He said, I know. It was almost an excitement and such giddiness that like he's been waiting for this moment. And he says, I know it's a triple threat movement. So the triple threat was salvation, healing and deliverance. But you know what's so good about that? It's not just for Andrew in a stadium. The Lord showed him it's for you. Andrew says, you are one decision away 
from seeing the greatest move of God's Spirit in your life. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural! We now return to It's Supernatural! Andrew, you say this new move will be marked by God's glory. Yes. You know, he spoke to me and he said to me that this move of God, man's ways of doing things, are not going to be included in this movement. I'm so glad. Yes, me too. <laughs> he said traditions and, and man's ways, but this move of God is going to be marked by the glory of God. And it's only in His glory that lives are transformed. It's only in His glory. When His glory appears, that's when chains break. When His glory appears, that's when people are healed, saved, and delivered. So this move of God is not going to be anything like we've ever experienced. It's going to be more like the book of Acts than anything we've seen before. Now, Jesus walked in the triple threat anointing. And he commanded his followers to do this. Yes. You know, uh, as I woke up from this dream, I was so puzzled by the title Triple Threat mm -hmm. because I, I've heard that in entertainment industries. I never heard that spiritually. Yes, I've never heard that in the church. So I began to pray about it. And he began to reveal to me, he said, I want you to study this out in scriptures because there is an anointing that's available now. We don't have to wait for the coming movement. In fact, it's going to usher in the movement. He said, uh, I want you to look in scripture. And so when I did, if if you look at the Great Commission, he tells them, he says, he commanded them to preach the gospel, the message of salvation, to heal the sick, healing, and to cast out devils, which is deliverance. And he said, that is what we are equipped to do today. The army of God is called, the people of God, every believer is called to walk in the triple threat anointing. How does just saying yes? allow us to potentially change the world? Well, you know, I can tell you about my yes. Uh, one Sunday morning I had, a, I was in the middle of a service. We were in the middle of worship. Uh, and as we were worshiping the Lord, I ho heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, I want you to go up and release a word of knowledge about healing. Now, I'm sitting there having a dialogue with the Holy Spirit in my mind, and I'm explaining, you know, uh, I need to preach first because the Word's important. I need to receive the offering, and then we'll move in the, the gifts uh, of the Spirit. And He spoke to me, and He said, if you want to do this service by yourself, I'll leave, and you can do this service by <laughs> yourself. Now, He knew that would get me because I never want to do a service no. by myself. And so I immediately went to the platform, and I began to release the word of knowledge about healing. And I had this little grandmother that had walked in, leaned over on a cane, and she came and she received her healing, dropped her cane right there. Then healing began to break out in the altars, and she's never again used the cane. And God began to move in the altar service right there. So I believe it's in our yes. The Holy Spirit is looking to partner with us. He wants to partner with us. This is not some illegal prayer. He wants to use us, but He is waiting for us to say, God, we want to be used by You, so here's my yes. And when you say that, you have to be willing to take the risk. That's right. That's right. Andrew will pray for the triple threat anointing to land on you. Next. You talk a lot about the importance of getting into the secret place. What is the secret place? You know, the secret place is anywhere where you have communion with God. The Bible says when you call to Him, 
He will answer you. And so the secret place can be a prayer closet, the secret place can be your car, wherever you can get to begin to have communication with God and you can begin to pray. See, I want some of you right now that are watching this program, God is calling you to the secret place. He is call. He wants to speak to you. That's the amazing thing is the Holy Spirit wants to partner with us. He wants us to accomplish His purpose. He could do it all by Himself, but He wants to use us. God spoke to you, playtime is over. What does that mean? Yes. Uh, I think how I could define that for you is that I know that when God spoke that to me, He said, when, the, when He said, uh, this is going to be marked by glory, He said, man's way of doing things. If you look at the apostles, they did not dumb down the message or make it uh, so that everyone would receive from it or, or user friendly. No, they prayed, God, make us more bold. Make us more, uh, let us see more signs and wonders and miracles. When they were persecuted, they said, God, let a new anointing come upon us so that we are more bold. And, and so, what I mean by, by saying playtime is over, we've been playing games in the church for long enough. We, we've been uh, pleasing ourselves long enough. We've been going by our schedules, our agendas. I believe there's a reset that is happening in the Spirit. And this next wave of glory is going to be confirmed by signs, wonders, and miracles. And we are going to see the masses, the masses that are coming into this movement because playtime is simply over. We can't play with games anymore. This is the kingdom of God. Speaking of playtime, and speaking of what Jesus said, you have to be like a little child to enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, you started at four. Your daughter didn't start till five. Right. What happened to her at five? Was she watching her father? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I have a little room over my garage, and I call it my upper room. And so I was up there praying, as I normally do, and uh, I hear the the little door creaking open. And so my first reaction was to, to tell Juliana, you know, go back downstairs and daddy will be down in a minute. We'll play together. Uh, however, in this moment, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, invite her to come into the prayer room with you. She needs to see her father pray. And so I said, Juliana, why don't you come in and pray with me? And I'll never forget it. I just shared a picture on my Facebook of her because I got a picture of it. I love that. But she had a little plastic crown on her head and she came in, she was in her pajamas and she brought a little drum that someone had given her. And so we're worshiping the Lord and she is playing the drum and uh, suddenly the glory of God just came and sat in the room, the weighty glory of God. And I was weeping, so I lay down in the, the presence of God, and I'm laying there, and I'm praying, and she comes and lays beside me, and she begins to weep. And at first, I thought, how cute, she's imitating me. And I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, no, I want to do something in her today. I want to fill her with the Holy Spirit. And so, I, He said, I want you to lay hands on her, explain to her what is happening, but I'm going to move in her today. And so I took my hands and I said, Juliana, the Holy Spirit wants to fill you today. He wants to give you your prayer language. And it said it was the most beautiful experience that the Lord had given me ever in my history of ministry because I laid hands on her that day. And as I began to pray with her, she got a fluent prayer language and began to pray in the Holy Ghost. And that day we stayed hours in His presence and she's never been the same again. Do you know, because of the glory, I believe in a moment you can pray over those viewing us right now and they are going to have an impartation of the triple threat anointing. One thing about your teaching it makes people hungry for more of God. And when you're hungry for more of God, He is more than able to fulfill that hunger. But just before I have Andrew pray for you, I want to make sure you have had experiential knowledge with the living God. Pray this prayer with me out loud. 
and mean it to the best of your ability. Dear God, God. repeat after me, dear God, God, I'm a sinner, sinner. and I'm so sorry. sorry. I turn from my sins. sins. I believe the blood of Jesus Jesus washes away every sin I've ever committed, and I'm clean in your sight. Now that I'm clean in your sight, I boldly proclaim, you are my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, come and live inside of me. You pray for the triple threat anointing for these people right now, the ones that just prayed and the ones that have done it previously. Lord, I come and I ask you right now, Oh, I just sense the glory of God just flowing to you right now. God, I thank you that you said when we ask you for the Holy Spirit, you will give the Holy Spirit to those that ask, that you won't give us a serpent or a scorpion. But I thank you right now for the Holy Spirit flowing over my friends right now. I thank you for the triple threat anointing, the anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage and sets the captive free, beginning to flow to them, flow inside of them, and not only uh, to them, but flow through them. I thank you that you have called them. Right now, you have been marked by the kingdom of God. You've been marked by God himself to be a carrier and a releaser of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You carry the glory of God. I thank you for it bubbling up, running over, and overflowing in them right now in the name of Jesus. Call now and get Andrew Tao's powerful brand new book, The Triple Threat Anointing, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching, Living in Triple Blessing, an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9696. You will receive Andrew Tao's powerful brand new book, The Triple Threat Anointing. In this book, you will learn how to flow in the triple threat anointing of salvation, healing, and deliverance. See Christ and impossibilities with supernatural eyes of faith. Obtain an expectant heart that is ready and positioned to experience miracles. Identify when the Holy Ghost effect is in operation. Overcome demonic pushback and put the devil on the run in your life. The alarm is sounding and an army is being awakened to the supernatural presence and power that is your inheritance in Jesus. You will also receive Andrew Tao's anointed three-part audio CD teaching, Living in Triple Blessing. Andrew Tao believes everyday people can flow in the miraculous power of God. It's not just for Bible times, it's for today. Through this anointed audio CD series, you will become equipped with a triple threat anointing of salvation, healing, and deliverance. Receive God's triple blessing. Move beyond the enemy's obstacles and begin to access every blessing and promise of God for your life. Be empowered to put your past behind you. Move into the next level of anointing and the glory of God. Come out of lack and sickness and move into abundance and wholeness. Andrew also releases powerful prayers of blessing and impartation upon you to overcome impossible situations, for captives to be set free, for you to move into a new supernatural season, to walk in the fire of God. We are called to walk in dominion over the earth. We're called to walk in authority. We're called to live in blessings. Don't miss out on getting Andrew Tao's powerful brand new book, The Triple Threat Anointing, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching, Living in Triple Blessing, an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience, Your for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9696. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9696 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.